A story is told about an actor who was trying to impress a gorgeous young girl at the bar. Don't you recognize me? She shook her head. I'm quite well known in the movies, you know. He continued. Oh, she said with her eyes lighting up. Where do you usually sit? Okay, good. <laughs> Proud persons are prone to embarrassment. This is God's way of teaching them about the evil of pride. A few years ago, I had the great blessing and privilege of visiting the Grotto of Our Lady of Lourdes in France. I joined my fellow pilgrims in plunging myself in the miraculous healing waters. I was wearing my clerical shirt all the time, but when we got into it, we were made to strip off all our clothes before going down the waters. This made a deep impression on me. Stripped of everything? I was reminded of the truth that in God's presence, everybody is equal. We are all sinners, limited and in need of God's mercy and help. This then was an invitation for me to go deeper in humility if I want to bathe in God's abundant graces. Saint Bernadette, and her words ring true. What will be the crown of those who, humble within and humiliated without, have, in it, uh, have imitated the humility of the Savior in all its fullness? The psalm says, A humble, contrite heart, O God, you will not spurn. Indeed, a humble heart is truly beautiful in the eyes of God. Every time we come to Mass, just like this one, we are reminded that we come before the presence of God. And so we need to humble ourselves. In fact, the entire sacred celebration is filled with the spirit of humility. Let me name some. It starts with a penitential rite. The priest invites us to have the right disposition. Brothers and sisters, he says, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. The readings, they usually remind us of God's mighty deeds and of man's helplessness and sinfulness. These are calls to repentance and conversion. In the prayer of the faithful, we express all our needs and desires humbly acknowledging and imploring God's merciful providence. In the Eucharistic prayer leading to consecration, we are asked to kneel, the vivid expression of humility in worship. And just before receiving Holy Communion, just like we will say again today, we say, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. After all, who is worthy anyway to receive the sacred body and blood of Jesus? The gospel this Sunday further underlines this point. Jesus gives us a lesson on the need to be humble and avoid the trap of proud people who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. He used two contrasting models of prayer, that of the Pharisee and the tax collector, as you can see on your screens. The Pharisee in the gospel was a good and a highly respected man. He was a very disciplined and serious-minded believer who committed himself to a life of regular prayer and observance of God's law. 
But when he prayed in the temple, he did not enjoy the favor of God. The fatal mistake of the prayer of the Pharisee is the lack of humility. We do not pray to report to God our accomplishments. We do not come to Mass to tell God how great we are. And most especially, we do not use prayer in condemning sinners and judging other people. This was precisely the great blunder of the Pharisee. Although he was a very good man, he was far from God. Pride is the worst capital sin, the root of all sins. When pride enters the spiritual life, it becomes the worst of all. It is bad to boast about our money, our intelligence, and our social status. But it's, it is much worse to boast about our own holiness and our own righteousness. This is called spiritual pride. Jesus has the harshest words against it, as he consistently condemned the holier-than-thou attitude of the Jewish leaders of his time. St. Vincent de Paul once said, You must ask God to give you power, power to fight against the sin of pride, which is your greatest enemy. The root of all that is evil and the failure of all that is good. For God resists the proud. The tax collector, on the other hand, was a public sinner. He was the most hated man in the community for being a traitor for the Jewish people and dishonest in his conduct. But his prayer, for some reason, somehow was more pleasing to God because he had the right disposition before God. He trusted not in himself or in anything he had done, but only he trusted in God's mercy. He acknowledged the truth that he was a great sinner, and so he dared not approach the altar. Again, as you can see on your screen. From a distance, what did he do? He just bowed his head and said, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. In his humility, he came to know the truth that God is full of mercy and full of love. Blessed Giles of Assisi once said, No man can attain to the knowledge of God but by humility. The way to mount high is to descend. The way to true holiness is humility. It is the most basic foundation of all Christian virtues. All the saints, without exception, were profoundly humble people. It is impossible to be holy without humility. As one comes closer to God, the true light, the more clear he sees his own unworthiness and sinfulness. The prayer of the tax collector is the same prayer that saints utter over and over and over again. O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That is why the saints, despite their avowed holiness of life, make it a point to come to the sacrament of confession almost every day. This then leads us to fully appreciate the value of regular and frequent confession. Saint Isidore of Seville said, Confession heals. Confession justifies. Confession grants pardon of sin. All hope consists in confession. This indeed is a great invitation for us, a golden opportunity to strip ourselves of shame, of guilt, of pride, of anger, of selfishness, of gluttony, of greed, of lust, even before we enter the doors of our church. And we say, here I am, Lord. Be merciful to me, a sinner. I offer you my all. 
And he's always ready to wrap us. He's always ready to clothe us with his mercy, with his love, and with his peace. Ah, God, you are so good to us and loving and merciful. A golden opportunity to be able to allow that grace of God to work in us. If we open ourselves right before Mass and strip of ourselves spiritually of these things that bind us to sin, we will be happier people. If we just say to the Lord, Lord, I'll get out of the way. You take the lead and I'll follow you. I'm not going to follow what I want, but I will follow what you want. I will be selfless and I'll be just thinking about you and thinking what you desire of me, not what I desire for myself. That's a lot of humility to do. A lot. Takes a lot of courage too to be able to admit that we're not perfect and we are wrong. Whoever wants to be told we are wrong, right? Nobody wants to be told we are wrong. Not even ourselves, we want to admit that we are wrong. In confession, there is a chance for mercy. Believe it firmly. Do not doubt. Do not hesitate. Never despair of the mercy of God. Hope and have confidence in confession. The sacrament of confession truly helps us grow in the depths of humility and in the heights of holiness. Perhaps it's a good thing to ask ourselves, when was my last confession? Am I going to wait for Advent? What if Advent doesn't come to me? Most of you, a lot of you told me after Father Matt Velanco's death, life is short. He died too young. When will be that time? When will we act? As we come once again before God's presence in this holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us bow our heads in humble acknowledgement of our unworthiness and sinfulness. May the Lord Jesus, who humbled himself on the cross for you and for me, fill us with the grace of humility so that we may become truly pleasing and beautiful in the eyes of our Lord. I made copies of a beautiful prayer that I pray myself every day, the Litany of Humility. It's available at the end of each side of the church on the tables. A beautiful prayer that has helped me ground myself to this virtue of humility. If you so wish, you may get a copy. Pray it for yourself. Pray for someone. I pray it helps you. And so as we continue with our Eucharistic celebration, let us approach the altar of sacrifice, the altar of the love and mercy of the Lord in humility. O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen.